We're going from, from this to this. Yay! <laughs> guys, welcome back to the channel. In this one, the little blue ute gets big fat wheels. Massive wheels. And I'm going to go through some of the common wheel misconceptions that people have and try to nut it out so you guys can work out how to fit the biggest wheels onto your car. And I'll show you how to fit the biggest wheels onto your car. <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> hey guys, I'm going to jump in quickly to simplify wheels for you. There are quite a lot of videos online that go into the minutia of wheel measurements and I recommend you watch them. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to keep it simple. So offset. Imagine that this is your wheel, cut it in half, that's your centre line. If the mounting point lies away from the centre line, away from the middle of the car, then that is a positive offset or a small dish. If the mounting point is away from the centre line, towards the middle of the car, then it's a negative offset or a big dish. So now backspace. So backspace is always measured from the mounting point towards the middle of the car. It is a measurement from the mounting point to the edge of the wheel. So one thing I don't think people realise is that when they measure a wheel, they measure it from the edge of the rim to the edge of the rim. And that is where the wheel and the tyre meet on each side. Now this doesn't take into account the lip of the rim, which as a standard is half an inch on each side. So how does that work in the real world? If a manufacturer says a wheel is 10 inches wide, if you get a tape measure, and measure it from the lip of each rim, it'll actually be 11 inches. So, if you have a wheel that's 10 inches wide and a zero offset, so the mounting point is dead center in the middle, most people assume that the backspace will be half of that, so five inches. But actually the backspace is 5.5, and this is where a lot of people get tripped up. So I want you guys to keep that in your mind, and I'm gonna clip back to our story time about the wheels. Later in the video, David's gonna go through a really simple way to work out how to fit big fat tires on your car using a block of wood and a tape measure. Okay, back to us talking. Thank you. Okay, so, David, tell us about the wheels. So, when I first bought the car, I put a set of these Lenzo D1Rs on, which were only ever meant to be a, an interim wheel, because they didn't really, I've already, already had them rolled twice, and even though they have 10s on the back with 275s, there was still gaps in the gad that really annoyed me. So we're gonna fill that gap. We're gonna fill the gap. We're gonna go 10 and a half with the 275 tire, on the front and 13 inch wheels with a 345 on the back. <laughs> You're very happy with yourself. That's awesome. So I knew the specs of the wheels that I needed and anything in a 13 inch wide wheel is pretty hard to come by. Three piece wheels are crazy expensive. So it's just by luck that someone with a crazy wide body Supra happened to be selling a set of these that would have been crazy dear new, like nearly $2,000 US a wheel. But I picked them up for a song. They did need some work. One was leaking. Tires are pretty shagged. Yeah. What else was wrong with them? They were different colours. They were different colours. <laughs> Minor detail. But like, so the main problem was that the guy said they were leaking. In he one didn't point. tell me that. Oh, did he tell you that? No, that's right. Wow, well, they were leaking. They were leaking. Um, and two different colours. Yeah. I knew roughly what they were, and I knew that they were going to fit. He spun out, but he said, "What's going on? This is new." He goes, Given a Falcon U. I said, well, tape measure doesn't lie. <laughs> I reckon I'll make a fit. Uh, so I knew that'd work. So, first things first, we've got to find out what this leak is, get that sussed out. Then we've got to paint them all the same colour. And then we've got to get these guards massaged. And that's about it. Is that it all? That's, um, we're going to clip to David in the past. Past David. Back to the past. Back to the past. <laughs> back to the past. So it wasn't the valve. We just put in a normal valve in the back there, but unfortunately it's coming out of that gap in the rim. So the bloke at the tire shop, he's like, oh, I've got to send it away and replace everything. I said, why don't I just put a bolt in there with a couple of O-rings? And he just stopped talking. I said, oh, you can try that. So I better put a bolt in a couple of O-rings. It might fix it. Let's give it a go. It's leaking from everywhere else now. Oh. No! So the bloke was right. It's got to come apart. <laughs> I thought I was under something. Easy, quick fix. But, no. I've just made it leak everywhere. When I picked the wheels up, two of them were painted grey in the centres and the other two were black. And I thought I'd just do them all black. I always like the blue cars with, with black wheels. But after test fitting the ones with the grey in the middle of them, 
Looks all right. So I might just put the centers out of the fronts and do them gray just for the time being. What do you got? Some black wheels, so gray be different. Um, so a little bit tedious job. Again, we've got all these bolts out and pulling the fronts out, but that's uh, that's what's involved to spray the, the center properly. So let's do it. This is a uh, not a bad brand. This is a Continental tyre and a fair bit of tread left on there. Looks okay. But the date on this tyre, week 49.03. So it's the end of 2020 now. That's uh, it's a 17 year old tyre. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't think I'll be doing any crazy high speed entries on these tyres. I don't think they'll be too sticky, but. At least we can get them on, test fit them, go for a drive, make sure nothing hits before we have to obviously replace all these tyres. So we've got the tyre off uh, and I'll just show with three piece wheels like this. They're obviously joined in the middle there and they've put a bead of silicon around it. Um, and there's nothing obvious on that bead that's leaking, but you can see where this is a reverse mount wheel, so the tyre's got to go on that way. And the young bloke at the tyre shop must have just put the big lever in and then spoon the the tire on and if you're not aware of that beta silicon you could sort of score it so there's a, a couple little score marks down inside the wheel where people have just been a bit heavy-handed and could have caught an edge but i'll clean it up and redo the silicon and hopefully that stops the air from falling out of it right, so i've just cleaned up the wheel and cut all the old silicon out of it uh, and just filed back some of the big gorge marks i'm trying to get away without separating the pieces so I think I'll cut all that silicon out anyway, and then redo the silicon bead, let it set, pop the tire back on, hopefully that sorts it out. A bit of a waste of time doing all this stuff, but that's what you get with second-hand parts. I wasn't prepared to do all this and buy new parts, uh, but the price of three-piece wheels, when I first started looking at three-piece wheels in this size, I thought, oh, that's not too bad. And then you realise that's US dollars, and then you realise that's each. So to find some second-hand ones, I'm happy to do this sort of job. So if this fixes it up and put some air in it. tire mounted up that doesn't seem to be leaking so we fix that one I've dropped it off at a paint shop with the centers out of the fronts and they tried to match the paint but after putting it together and doing a quick test fit i'm not quite happy with the color of course you just stick to black i was trying to get away without doing it myself but it looks like i'm gonna have to have a go I set up all the spray gun and everything at the back and some hardeners and I've, I've had someone mix up some paint that should be pretty close so i'll probably just shoot all four centers then i know they're the same bit of a waste of time it's gonna come apart again that's what i'm after anyway i hope it looks all right but i might end up just going to black anyway let's do it Right, so I've just finished painting the centres, done all four. It's actually Nardo grey, this colour, it's often a howdy. It's a couple of coats of colour, a couple of coats of clear. If you reckon I'm sick of putting bolts in and out of these things, you'd be about right. But I'm halfway through putting them back together. I just thought I'd show you something that now that I've seen it, I can't unsee it. So this one's pretty much done. Had a couple of stickers made up, make them look fancy. iForge is the brand of the wheel. With the three-piece wheels, I worked out it wouldn't be too much mucking around to mount the centers in backwards. So this one, I just dummy fitted in backwards there. Yeah, I can stand up and spin around. So that's how it would look if I spun the center. It doesn't go straight in, being a reverse mount wheel, it doesn't fit in there you've got to slide it in the normal way it goes in but the face of it is not flat so I'd have to make up a little lip but while I was waiting for that last coat of paint to dry I called up a couple of diff places to see what's involved in shorting the diffs on these things and it's not that bad so I think after seeing that I'm pretty keen to cut a bit out of the diff and put the <laughs> big dish out the front that's over eight inches of dish the dish on that is better than the factory wheels were on the back of this <laughs> So that wheel now, I took a couple of measurements, it measures 19 by 13 with a two and a half inch backspace. It's... <laughs>
<laughs> be interesting to see what the difference does to the handling because if we shorten the diff the right way, the wheel should still be in exactly the same spot. It's just getting pushed around from a different part, so it might not make any difference, but it might make a difference. I don't know. When he quoted me on the price, that's actually not bad. We'll do that. I thought, oh, while we're in there, what about going to a 31 spline actual or chuck a true track in it at the same time? They always get a bit higher and higher, but do it once, do it properly. I know if I've just shortened axles or put in some 28 spline ones, they won't last. I'm keen to put it together with a big dish. Not today, we'll put it together this way. It should still look pretty cool, but I want the big dish now of dish. I just thought I'd show you something before we put these on. This was the 20 by 10. Uh, it's come off there. I'll show you the weight. Now this is the 19 by 13 with the 345 on it. 26.4. Here's my mask on there. Two and a half, just over two and a half kilos difference. So probably not as much as what you might think. That's all. All right, real easy way to calculate how fat a wheel we can fit under here. Tape measure, put up inside. Work out how fat you reckon you're gonna fit. As soon as you already said, you've got to take off one inch from that because the wheel does come an inch wider. Magic black of wood, stick it on the half. Whatever's behind that block of wood, that's the backspace where it's going to hit something. So a little bit less, however much clearance you want, that's the backspace you've got to order. And then at the front there, that's the total width of the wheel we've got to order. Wheels with less and less backspace, are gonna poke out further at the front, but you got wasted room at the back. We want as much back space as we can before it's gonna hit something, and as fat as we can go at the front without hitting the outside as well. What you gotta take into account though is the suspension movement. So I've got the wheel tucked up there where it's gonna sit. This is a leaf spring rear end. So it's gonna go straight up and down, and it can do quite funny things as well. This is a pretty stiff setup, but it's a bit unpredictable with the movement of that wheel. With normal independent rear suspension, you can have the wheel poking out a fair bit and it works, it sort of sucks it in. So you can have the wheel poking out further. This one we can't have it poking out at all because it goes straight up and down, but just be aware of the way your suspension is gonna move. So when you've worked out how far you can go without hitting something, next you've gotta work out whatever it's gonna hit, how easy is that thing to move? In this instance, we're going to go as fast as we can go without moving anything. But if we want to go a little bit further, we can mount the shocks on the inside, you can move the bump stop, you can even move these uh, little braces for the inner tub in further as well. But uh, in this is we're not moving any of that stuff. Wheel ordering 101. Done. All right, now that they're pretty much on, I thought I'd share what's involved in getting a wheel this size in something like this and getting it sitting so low. Probably wouldn't have to go as far if it was closer to normal height, where this one does sit pretty close to the bump stops. Uh, this is obviously a guard roller, and anytime you can try to shoehorn fat wheels under a guard, this is pretty much the go to tool. But <laughs> anytime I get down to the cupboard, I know I'm in for a bit of a battle because it's hard work, especially when you're working on the drive wheels and it's spinning the whole tail shaft and everything. It's yeah, it's not easy. And I thought I'd share one of the muck ups. So uh, on the front, it's all pretty easy going. The lip's almost up flat anyway, so you can just roll it back and forth a few times, bit of heat onto it, and it pushes up flat. Fitting this size wheel, I've had to pump it out a little bit more, obviously. On the pack, this is such a big panel, and it's got a 25 mil lip under there. They've also got a standard sort of a, a brace in there. It's got two sides to that, and there's a bit of a trick. If you need to go just a little bit, you can loosen the bolts at the top and stretch it out, even drill another couple of holes in there and put the bolts back in so it pumps the guard out a little bit. It's easy. But with the 25mm lip under there, you're never going to get that tight clearance. Now, I made the mistake on my white one. I was trying to squeeze in 20 by 10s roughly a zero offset, maybe a plus five, with a 305 tire. And I just rocked that back and forth a few times, snapped it off, the brace. Then rolled the guard, the inner lip up flat, which wasn't easy. This is such a big panel that it wanted to push the panel out a lot more than it wanted to roll it flat. So you had to really brace the outside and roll it. And it took a bit of rolling, but got it up there flat. The only thing with doing that, that lift gives it so much strength and that brace 
that when you do that, the thing just flapped that much going down a bumpy road that it kept pump, popping out the fuel filler cap. So it, it really does wobble and it ended up cracking the paint and that's not the way I wanted to tackle this one. So on this one, we've rolled the front, used that tool on the front, but on the back, didn't use that at all. Just used a grinder and cut the lip out. Obviously snap that brace off and then cut the lip back probably from about 25 mil down to about four mil and that's still strong as anything so we can get quite tight clearance there and not worry about that just flapping in the wind and hit the tire there might be smarter bikes than me they do it to roll it and keep the strength into it certainly i mucked up on the white one <laughs> on this one we're going obviously a lot further so i'm just cutting the back this one <laughs> yeah it's a stressful tool for me to use because sometimes with a real square lip like that you've got to tap it up with a hammer and then that ripples it and then you spend the whole time trying to smooth it out again and stressing out that you mucked it at least just by cutting it back i could get a much neater stronger job than what i was confident doing with the guard roller but it's in there now everything's super tight but we've gone for a few drives now and nothing scrubs no scrubs at all which is a miracle i've actually got some shots of how tight some of those clearances are. A shot of how tight it is on the rear tyre and the rear shock absorber. It's a clearance between the front steering knuckle and the inside of the front rim and inside the rear wheel with the lower shock mount clearance. So it's all right if it's super tight, as long as it doesn't contact anything. We're happy. You're helping too, You're helping too, okay. Thank you, buddy. Thank you, buddy. Ryan Little. <laughs>